Hillary Clinton undoubtedly enriched herself during her time in public service. It was her hubris that may have ultimately driven the final stake through the heart of her political ambitions. As the presidential race was heating up in 2015, it was discovered that tens of thousands of emails from her tenure as Secretary of State were being housed on a private email server in the basement of her home in Chappaqua, New York. Many of those emails contained classified or confidential information. The use of the server had not been disclosed to the State Department and represented a major breach in national security. The fallout from the discovery and her subsequent attempts to cover up her actions damaged her presidential campaign and likely contributed to her defeat on Election Day. Joining me now is someone who is at the center of the efforts to find answers about Hillary's emails, the president of Judicial Watch, Tom Fitton. Tom, thanks for, for being here. Okay, good to be with you, but thanks for having me. So can we just remind everybody first, um, what was the reason for the email server in the first place? Why, why did Hillary Clinton, I don't mean why did she say that she set it up, of course. What was the real reason behind setting up this email server and, and an, an entire email process in a way that was outside of what the regulations and what classification regulations require? A judicial watch. <laughs> she knew groups like Judicial Watch would be asking for information. People ask all the time, but what was it she was trying to hide? And my response is she was trying to hide everything. And uh, in the least, she was thinking, I would presume that if anything was to come out, it would have to be vetted by her lawyers. And sure enough, uh, she took all those emails with her, uh, attempted to destroy uh, evidently about half of them. And, uh, you know, so those, some of those may never be recovered. Some of them ended up being recovered. Uh, but she was hiding everything. She was hiding uh, her documents about uh, monies that were uh, being, uh, uh, the foundation's involvement with the State Department, the pay-to-play scandal, obviously Benghazi. You know, she took the position that she was above the law. You know, I, and outrageously, uh, Colin Powell, who was a, uh, obviously a Republican appointee from back in the day, you know, advised her to uh, try to keep records from FOIA. So, you know, there's this deep state arrogance with regard to transparency and, and she just didn't care about the rules. The rules didn't apply to her. She also doesn't care about telling the truth, obviously. There's a lot of examples of that that we could sit here and talk about, Tom. But back in March of 2015, on the email specifically, here she is saying that she went through a thorough process of delivering them to State Department and only deleted personal emails. Watch. We went through a thorough process to identify all of my work-related emails and deliver them to the State Department. At the end, I chose not to keep my private personal emails, emails about planning Chelsea's wedding or my mother's funeral arrangements, condolence notes to friends, as well as yoga routines, family vacations, the other things you typically find in inboxes. No one wants their personal emails made public, and I think most people understand that and respect that privacy. What was the truth? What she said was not the truth, uh, Tom, so what was? Well, none of them were personal emails. They're all government emails. You know, they were on a government system or were under the custody and control of the State Department, in my view. So she shouldn't have had any of them. And it wasn't her decision to make. Uh, but subsequently, we found uh, that she had deleted classified materials and documents that were clearly government documents. So that was a bald-faced lie. And, you know, given the... Uh, the fact that we had a, a governor of a major state, Virginia, prosecuted over who paid for his wedding, and then subsequent allegations that uh, Chelsea Clinton misused Clinton Foundation funds for her wedding. Um, you know, we can see why she was very focused on maybe the wedding emails, but all that was just chaff to distract from the fact that she took and destroyed uh, government information uh, that was the property of the American people. And, and risk our national security. This is, the, this is why classified information is supposed to be protected. When you take it away from the systems, and I don't need to lecture you on this, uh, that um, are secure, it, uh, it, it puts all that material at risk from being uh, reviewed by uh, people from abroad or people here who aren't, shouldn't have access to it. And she took all that classified, classified information and put it on the public, the internet equivalent of a public park bench. This is remarkable.
And as I've said many times as a former CIA officer, if I had done similar thing, if I had done something similar, I would have assumed that my, my best bet would be uh, trying to make a plea bargain with the U.S. attorney to make sure that I served the minimum amount of time in prison after pleading guilty to a felony. But of course, Hillary didn't even get charged, as we know. We'll get to that in a little bit. Uh, on the recovery of the emails, you mentioned what she was deleting. And we're really just working through the various lies and, and, uh, and obfuscations that Hillary and the Hillary DNC camp were putting forward at the time. Back in August of 2015, here's what she said about, you know, what do you mean, like, like with a cloth? Watch. The FBI believes that you tried to wipe the entire server. Did you try to wipe the entire so that there would be no email, no personal, no official? Well, well, my personal emails are my personal business, right? right? So, I, so we went through a painstaking process and turned over 55,000 pages of anything we thought could be work-related. Under the law, that decision is made by the official. I was the official. I made those decisions. You were the official in charge. Did you like the service? What, like with a cloth or something? No. I mean, obviously not a funny joke, but is, that's remarkable. So she, her, tell me about this claim that under the law, she gets to decide what emails are pertinent. Well, that's, that's quite a way to get transparency going. Yeah, she's a former government official. And, uh, you know, the irony is if she had deleted them all while she was at the State Department, I don't know if there was anything even legally we could have done. Um, but she left the State Department, and these were government documents that should have been presented to the State Department. Indeed, she admitted it. Uh, by turning over those, as she points out, those 55,000 pages of documents, uh, many of, all of which she shouldn't have had. And then secondly, um, she destroyed government documents, uh, this classified information. And, you know, she left uh, with these documents and contrary to law, she stole the documents as best as I can tell. And she should have been held accountable for it. You know, there was a rough justice in the sense that she was held politically accountable for it. Uh, but this system of law enforcement here in Washington, D.C. has been terribly corrupted, and uh, it refused to take um, uh, any legal action against her that it would have done uh, to anyone else in similar circumstances. And, you know, it, to me, it helps explain why uh, Trump was targeted. Um, I didn't know this at the time, but they had, it, they knew at the time that the Trump-Russia scam was specifically designed to take the heat off of Hillary Clinton. And that we all suspected that, but Comey knew, the White House knew that was the case. Uh, and uh, so everything Trump went through in many ways was even less about Trump than it was about protecting Hillary Clinton from the legal consequences of her misconduct. And did we ever find out the full, what the full tally was in terms of the emails that were deleted? Basically, did, did we get all the emails? I mean, that was a question no, that I know people always ask. I think there are thousands that are still missing. And, you know, the courts came in and saved Hillary. Uh, we were set to depose her because um, a lower court judge, a district court judge, had ruled that she had to be deposed because of the gamesmanship and her uh, careful and dishonest language. Uh, and uh, the appellate court says, oh, no, we, you know, it doesn't matter what happened here. She shouldn't have to be deposed. And then, and then another court refused to let her, uh, re refused to make the State Department search for her emails. So despite all of this, the State Department has yet to search for her agency emails in the, in her, in the systems. They just relied on what they turned back to, what was turned back to them and what the FBI perhaps was able to uncover. Uh, incredible. And a lot of this fight we went through, I mean, because our litigation uncovered all of this, was with the Trump Justice Department. So you had Trump uh, Justice Department officials under Sessions and then Barr come in and try to defend Hillary Clinton. It was- You mentioned, I, I, you mentioned the FBI, I, I, Thomas. I, I wanted to take everybody on a, on a quick uh, trip down memory lane with this one too. Remember back in July, 2016, a presidential election year, the FBI director, this is not his job, no other FBI director that anyone's ever heard of or can remember has done something like this, went forward publicly to announce no criminal charges against Hillary Clinton, watch. Usual transparency is in order. Although there is evidence of potential violations of the statutes regarding the handling of classified information, our judgment is that no reasonable prosecutor would bring such a case. 
Prosecutors necessarily weigh a number of factors before deciding whether to bring charges. There are obvious considerations like the strength of the evidence, especially regarding intent. Responsible decisions also consider the context of a person's actions and how similar situations have been handled in the past. Uh, I mean, that, that's, it's, you know, it's remarkable, Tom, even just watching it again. I obviously saw that live when it happened. I've talked about it many times since then. He's the FBI director. He's not even a prosecutor when he's making that statement. And yet he just sort of waves away that any prosecutor could, even though there are violations of law, bring a case. That was fascinating, wasn't it? Yeah, I mean, what Comey did was outrageous. Obviously, he was doing things outside his power as FBI director, but he also, uh, and, you know, I'm no fan of Hillary Clinton, abusing Hillary Clinton in that statement. I mean, this should have been a confidential investigation. Uh, the conclusions he drew about her conduct um, is, you know, was, was been, you know, beyond his power and beyond uh, being appropriate for an FBI director. Uh, Hillary Clinton, you know, he should have made the recommendation and left it at that. He had no business uh, dragging her through the, um, uh, the legal mud the way he did, even if he was, you know, morally or technically correct uh, about what she did. Uh, but it wasn't his business to to uh, disclose all of that uh, because she had a right to privacy and to due process. And um, it was a nightmare. Uh, and of course, one of the reasons he did it is because he thought the Justice Department was corrupted and that uh, Loretta Lynch was corrupt because she had allegedly promised, the rumor was, uh, uh, or someone else had talked to Loretta Lynch and she had guaranteed to be no prosecution. So uh, he thought he needed to do the decision himself, which was not the way things are supposed to operate. Our, our Justice Department was so corrupted then, and uh, it let people like uh, Comey, who thought he was God, uh, do the garbage he did. The LA Times back in June of 2018 had this headline on it. Inspector General, this was two years, of course, after all of this, Inspector General finds Comey mishandled FBI's Clinton email inquiry, disclosing it to the public improperly. So the, the after action review here from the actual FBI inspector general showed that what Comey did was, was outrageous. It wasn't just some Republican talking point. It wasn't uh, people just saying it because they felt like saying it. So uh, w with that in mind, um, do you think that those emails, as you said, there was some political accountability. Hillary didn't win the 2016 election. It took her a while to admit that, but she didn't win it. And it wasn't actually <laughs> Russia that gave it to Trump. But the Clinton propensity for secrecy and corruption, was that really just what was behind this whole email fiasco? And was, do you think that there was even more corruption in the emails than what we were able to see? Well, one can presume that when you unlawfully destroy information, uh, why would she get the benefit of the doubt? You know, I remember when she first was running for office, and when we first asked for the records like this, it was about Benghazi. I had no idea she was running for office. But I remember the Republicans at the time saying, well, you know, what kind of secretary of state was she? Did she have an impact in all this policy discussion? And I remember thinking, you all don't know what you're talking about. She was there to gain money and power for further political ambition. And it turned out that's what was going on at the State Department. Uh, she was using it as a vehicle to raise money for her political operation that was managed by the Clinton Foundation. Uh, and, you know, it makes Hunter Biden seem like an amateur by, in, in comparison. Tom, thanks for your work and thanks for joining us. Appreciate it. You're welcome. That's all the time we have for this first TV special, American Scandal, Hillary Clinton. Thanks for joining us.